Good evening, and we start here at 6 o'clock with storms rolling through our area. Viewer Barbara Cox sent us this video of a downpour. You can hear it there in Salem. Heavy rain and lightning around the Portland metro area. Let's send things over now to Chief Meteorologist Matt Safino tracking this all for us on the radar, Matt. Yeah, the heavy rain has certainly moved into the Portland area. We're not getting any lightning strikes in town right now, and the threat of lightning may be coming to an end. I can't rule it out completely yet, but we certainly have some heavy downpours, especially over here by Oregon City, where you see the red on the map, the rainfall rates there at least an inch and a third an hour. It is raining uh, just beginning to move into the Portland area proper. But the good thing is we haven't seen any new lightning strikes here in the last 20 30 minutes or so. So with that in mind, strong showers and still a chance for a thunderstorm moving into the Portland area. Now we will at least get those heavy downpours. Lightning still a possibility, although less so than an hour ago. Hail, heavy downpours, as I mentioned, and there's a threat of more thunderstorms coming our way tomorrow. Now this is the global lightning mapper, and you can actually see the lightning strikes uh, as viewed from the weather satellite up in space. See those little blasts and there we go. That was that swarm around Salem earlier in the evening here outside right now. Portland certainly raining. As you can see, we're down to 50 degrees. The east wind has picked up and down at Stoller Vineyard, where it's just been completely socked in. The visibility actually improving. We couldn't even see that line of trees there about 20 minutes ago. So things improving from south to north. We'll get the heavy rain moving through Portland area within about the next hour or so, guys. Back to you. Wow, what an active weather day. Thank you, Matt. Now we have some breaking news from Seattle to tell you about. A Metro bus was involved in a shooting tonight. The driver of the bus, we can tell you, was hit and has been taken to the hospital. You can see two bullet holes in the windshield of the bus. Yeah, there they are right now. Uh, we're getting some more information also. It looks like at this point that the 12 passengers on board of that bus are okay, but we can say there's a second scene connected to this shooting. Our sister station in Seattle says four people in total have been shot. We're working to learn more as we do. We'll keep you updated right here and on KGW.com. Now to photographic evidence of classrooms in crisis. Overturned tables, destroyed wall hangings. They paint a picture of a much bigger problem in Oregon schools. And now a new law could force Oregon school districts to report every time a teacher has to clear a classroom because of a disruption. KGW investigative reporter Kristen Severance live now in Salem where a public hearing on this bill just wrapped up. Kristen, you've been hearing, of course, through this whole process from so many teachers more today. Some of them saying they've been doing these room clears every week. Right. And you know, some teachers tell me there are room clears in their schools every day. And while we hear this anecdotally, this law for the first time would give us real numbers on just how often this is happening in districts across the state. For the first time, we're seeing the aftermath of a classroom disruption. We were sent these pictures after our first classrooms in crisis story. The teacher said a student had become disruptive, knocked over a table, threw papers, binders and projects to the ground and ripped apart this hallway display. All the other students had been cleared from the room, the something teachers have told KGW happens frequently in schools design. across Oregon. A room clear is pretty much where a student is so dysregulated that your students are not safe. And when I'm by myself, I just tell my students to walk in and the other teacher will know what it means. Leading to a loss of learning for all students. Think of that student who in kindergarten lost so many hours of instruction yeah. because the teacher was busy helping those kids with high needs. Mm -hmm. By the time they reach me in fifth grade, they're lacking some fundamental mental skills that are multiple grade levels behind. But knowing how often room clears happen is nearly impossible because most districts don't keep track. Before you can actually find a solution for something, you've got to have all the facts. Representative Susan McLean co-sponsored a bill that requires school districts to track and report every room clear to the Oregon Department of Education. We're working really hard to make sure that we know how many room clears there are, what are the disruptive types of behaviors that are causing those room clears. Representative Janine Salman, a member of the Education Committee, says lawmakers know this is happening. Now they'll know where and how often. I think it's going to provide us some solid data. I think making sure that we're looking at the situations in all 197 school districts, seeing where there's some common situations, some common patterns, and seeing how we can best address it. All right, today was a public hearing. The House Committee is expected to vote on this next week. If this law passes, districts would have to start tracking these clears by September, in September at the start of the school year. We'll be following up. Live in Salem, I'm Kristen Severance, KGW News.
It sounds like an important information for districts to have. Thank you, Kristen. If you have a story idea for Kristen to investigate, give her a call. Here's the number 503-226-5041, or you can email call Kristen at KGW.com. You're probably going to have some thoughts on this next story we're about to tell you here. That's why it's tonight's KGW viewer voice question. Should Oregon grant undocumented immigrants driving privileges? Immigration advocates are urging Oregon leaders to drop citizenship as a requirement to get a license in Oregon. And an upcoming federal overhaul of state licenses could provide an opening to do that. If that happens, all someone would need to do to get a license is pass their driving test and meet other minimum DMV requirements in Oregon. An estimated 100,000 undocumented immigrants live here. They used to be allowed to legally drive, but leaders changed the law in 2008 to comply with federal ID laws. So we want to know what you think here. Head to KGW.com slash vote. Let us know, uh, do you think undocumented immigrants should be granted driving privileges? Yes or no? You can also vote on the KGW app. Just click on the tile that says viewer voice. We'll have the final results for you near the end of the newscast. Here is some video proof that locking your car doors and keeping your valuables out of sight is always a good idea. Check out what happened last week in Happy Valley. Surveillance video catches a squad of car prowlers scoping out all the vehicles on the block. This is near Southeast 152nd and Misty Drive in Happy Valley. The homeowner who took this video says their vehicles were safe because their doors were locked. Happy Valley police hope that someone recognize any of these prowlers in this video and helps bring them in. So we've already seen a handful of these brush fires breaking out this spring, but last year during the fire season, we saw a huge number of human caused fires in Southern Oregon specifically. In fact, by the end of that year, that part of the state experienced 541 fires that were not started by natural causes. Southwest Oregon alone saw 262 human caused fires. The Oregon Department of Forestry says most of them started because of debris burns. Some were equipment use, others from some kind of recreational activity. Dean Hackworth had to evacuate actually his home last year when the transient fire, a transient fire, started near Medford. Oh, it was, well you can see, I mean it was, it was raging, it was, it was going off. In all, Southern Oregon saw triple the number of human caused fires than the rest of the state. Education Secretary Betsy DeVos has proposed cutting funding for the Special Olympics, and she's getting a lot of heat for it tonight. KGW's Joe Ranieri joins us now with how this could impact Oregon's Special Olympics. And Joe, you sat down, you talked today to the CEO of Special Olympics Oregon. What was her reaction? Well, the CEO of Special Olympics Oregon told me there was a little surprise when she first heard about this proposed cut. She told me she's seen this before, though, and it can be a long process, with more than 270,000 kids potentially being impacted. There is a lot of emotion here locally over the proposed cuts to Special Olympics. Britt Oas, who's the CEO of Special Olympics Oregon, says she's trying to stay calm. We're trying to not overreact. It's not the first time that this has happened. Um, in fact, the last couple of years it was cut from the presidential budget, and luckily we have really strong bipartisan support um, in Congress. Lawmakers looked at several different programs for potential cuts, including the more than $17 million supporting Special Olympics. Education Secretary Betsy DeVos has said she supports students with disabilities, but says the Special Olympics are not a federal program. OAS says the 30 local programs around the state would not be impacted, but it's the unified champion schools that would be under the proposed cuts. This funding impacts our unified champion schools programs, and what that that entails are schools that partner with Special Olympics to create inclusive school communities by having students with and without intellectual disabilities um, train and compete in sports together. Right now, Oregon has 112 unified champion schools. Owis tells me they're hoping to expand to 150 by the end of the year and hopes lawmakers realize how important this program is for kids and families. You know, it's always surprising to me whenever anybody wants to cut Special Olympics from something because it's so valuable. Now, I spoke to a mother whose son has been participating in unified sports with the Special Olympics Oregon for the last few years. She says she thinks the proposed cuts, and her words, are crazy. She told me over the phone she has seen kids do better in school having Special Olympics as an outlet. Back to you. Thank you, Joe. 
An ex-police officer in Sun River is in trouble tonight, accused of abandoning his post to help a woman he was having an affair with. The Deschutes County DA charged Casey Hughes with two counts of misconduct. This stems from an incident in November of 2018 when authorities say Hughes got a troubling phone call from a girlfriend in Bend. He was worried she'd been sexually assaulted, so he left his post in Sun River and drove to Bend to check on her. He faces charges for both abandoning his post and not reporting her alleged sexual assault to Bend Police. A bill in Salem would let schools teach first graders gun safety. There was actually a public hearing about this just today, and if it passes, teachers, administrators, law enforcement officers, or first responders would be allowed to teach gun safety. It would not be a required class, so keep that in mind, and it would not involve any real guns. It would just teach kids how to respond if they were to, in fact, encounter a real gun. The man who came up with this idea says it's all about safety. I had this idea on a Sunday um, in a coffee shop um, in December, and that night there was a kid that died 20 minutes from my house. And so this is something that, you know, is my fuel, you know, to, to keep going. and to make sure that I can reach those ones that do need, need our help. If passed, the classes would also discuss the difference between video game violence and real life violence. And if parents don't want their kids to participate in this, they can simply opt out.